Today, I've decided that it is time to go back to the channel's roots. I'm going to sit down with a Linux distro and really take a quick, semi-unscripted look at it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Manjaro ARM GNOME. Now, this is the version of Manjaro that you'd run on a Raspberry Pi or another ARM device like that. There is an x86 version of Manjaro GNOME, but this isn't it. And as far as I'm aware, it's a little bit different from this. I don't actually know, I haven't used an x86 machine in quite some time. Personally, I run this operating system on my Pinebook Pro, and I really enjoy using it. So, I want to show it to you today. My first impressions are that this is a very vanilla GNOME desktop, which I really like because the last time that I tried Manjaro GNOME x86, it was really bloated and I had to turn off a lot of the extensions because I didn't actually like them. Though, one thing that I will say is that I feel like this desktop is probably too vanilla for most people. For instance, there's no minimize and maximize buttons on these windows. If you want to maximize it, you have to drag it to the top of the screen. And as embarrassing as this is to admit, I'm not actually sure how you minimize windows in GNOME without the minimize and maximize buttons, which you can actually enable using the GNOME tweak tool. If we just go ahead and open this up, then go down to Windows. It's under Windows title bar. It's been a while since I've had to do this. And you can turn on the minimize and maximize buttons and then the GNOME desktop will behave more like you expect it to. That would be one thing that I suggest changing for the future of this operating system. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at what extensions are installed? Because as I say, it is fairly vanilla. Now, as you can see, there aren't that many. Workspace indicators, I think that's enabled by default on most GNOME desktops. There's user themes, which is enabling this quite nice Manjaro theme. I don't know really how I feel about Manjaro doing this since um, Adwita is very much the standard for GNOME desktops now and using anything but can break certain things, but I kind of understand that Manjaro would want their own identity. There's also the PAMAC updates indicator, which is what you can see up here. It'll tell you when there are updates available. If we keep going, that's pretty much it. Good on Manjaro for kind of minimalizing, if that's even a word, their Manjaro GNOME install. Now, let's take a look at the pre-installed apps. And as you're about to see, there really aren't many of them. This pretty much is just the GNOME suite of applications. As you can see, you've got Geary, which is a very good email client. It's kind of the default one for GNOME. You've got the Manjaro Software Center, which does make installing software nice and easy. And as you can see, you've got a list of programs you can install here. One of the problems that I actually had when I first got my Raspberry Pi back in the day is that the default operating system didn't actually have a good software center. So I just didn't know how to install software because that was my, you know, very early on in my Linux experience. So good on Manjaro for including this. So anyone who just gets a Pinebook Pro or something can turn it on and get right to using it and know exactly how to install software. Next, we've got the weather app. We've got some SSH apps. You've got the GNOME Maps app. You've got more server stuff, photos, videos, calculator, gedit, document scanner, settings, system monitor, terminal, which is just the standard GNOME terminal. There is some customizations that Manjaro have done here to the terminal. I'm not actually sure what shell this is. I think it might be fish, but I could very much be wrong about that. Let's have a look. Well, I can confirm that it's, I don't think it's fish because fish actually isn't installed. So I don't know what this is, short of saying that it just looks really nice. And if we keep going, you can see that we've got some utilities, pretty standard stuff. The most notable inclusion here, I think, is GNOME Disks. Really great disk management utility. I use it even on desktops and aren't GNOME. If we keep going, you've got Celluloid, which is a MPV client. Great program for playing videos. If you keep going still, you've got Help, Color Picker, Deconf Editor, the extensions we've just gone through, Firewall Configuration, and a program called Gradients. Now this program is very, very useful. Essentially what it does is enables you to theme the new GNOME Libidwita thing, which kind of think of it as being like GNOME's modern implementation of GTK. Now, this is actually something that quite annoys me because it means that on Linux, you now have GTK apps, Libidwita apps, Qt apps, and more, which really makes it difficult to have consistent theming across multiple apps. But this program certainly bridges the gap 
and makes it actually very easy to theme your operating system. Although it does make it hard to have like quite a diverse theme since you can only really change the colors. However, one of my favorite features of this program is that it does actually support theming legacy GTK3 apps. So if we just go ahead and search on my theme of choice, which is Grovbox Dark, install that, and there you go, that was very easy. If we restart the apps that um, make use of the theme, uh, that should be Grovbox. I'm actually not quite sure why it's doing that. It's because we haven't hit apply, that would be it. Uh, in order to make use of the full changes, we would need to log out and log back in again, but we're not gonna do that. But as you can see, now that's Grovbox theme. Manjaro Arm, you know, really does make it easy to theme right out of the box. I can highly respect that. You've got a hardware locality tool, not quite sure what that does. You've got a Helix, which I think is, by the looks of things, just a simple text editor or something. Cool. You've got HTOP for looking at system resources. There you go, if you want to see how much resources this uses. Little over 700 megabytes of RAM, and that's our CPU usage. So. Pretty light considering it's a GNOME desktop. If we keep going, you've got an icon browser, Kvantum Manager, which is for theming QT apps. I assume that that probably means that Manjaro have their own QT themes out of the box. So that's taken care of it for you. You've got the Manjaro Settings Manager, so you can manage your user accounts, language packages, locale settings, time and date, keyboard settings, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately though, it does seem that the ARM version of Manjaro doesn't have the same kernel options that the x86 version does. So for instance, in the x86 version of Manjaro, you can easily swap out kernel versions. That, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be the case here on the ARM version. If we keep going, you've got the Manjaro tray. You've got vanilla MPV, if that's your preference over celluloid. You've got power statistics, pulse audio volume control, some QT utilities, Remina, which I believe is a remote connection program, trash, and YAD settings. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm sure if you've kind of taken a look at this, you've probably noticed a few glaring emissions. I think the main thing that I would include here is probably Firefox, because yes, web is down here in the dock. I didn't point that out earlier, but honestly, I don't know that web is particularly daily drivable. But other than the lack of inclusion of Firefox, I've got to say, I really do highly respect the Manjaro Arm GNOME team for not like totally bloating out the software selection because a lot of distributions come with absolutely everything under the sun. I mean, Ubuntu even used to come with like video editing software and image editing software. And it just kind of makes you think, how many people are really gonna use that? And for the people who will use that kind of software, the probably going to have their own preferences as to what they want to use. So I think including as little as possible out of the box is probably the way to go. Because as I say, you can just build up your own operating system and software suite using the Manjaro software manager. And that's far better than having a bloated operating system out of the box. But I guess maybe some people would prefer to have more options included by default, especially new Linux users. Next, Let's do the mandatory thing with uh, these sorts of videos. Let's take a look at the included wallpapers. As you can see, there are no included wallpapers. This is your included wallpaper. So really, they're going for the minimalism angle again. But yeah, I do really like this operating system. By and large, it gives you a Arch Linux install on ARM devices with a pretty vanilla GNOME, which is kind of all I'd want. In fact, in many cases, Manjaro ARM is actually better at being a vanilla Arch operating system than actual vanilla Arch is on ARM devices. You see, Arch Linux ARM is absolutely terrible. There's all sorts of package issues, all sorts of other weird issues. A lot of software that you would think would be available isn't. A lot of stuff just doesn't work once you've installed it. It's an absolute mess. For example, I like a program called Handbrake. It's a uh, video transcoder, not available in Arch Linux ARM for some reason. If we search it up on the Manjaro ARM repositories, there it is, Handbrake. And if we go ahead and install it, and I'm not sure if this is gonna work because we are running in a virtual machine and I don't know if I allocated that much storage, but if we install this, go ahead and open this up. And as you should soon be able to see, there you go, Handbrake working absolutely fine. So I really 
do kind of think in some respects, Manjaro ARM kind of is the definitive Arch Linux ARM operating system for ARM devices. So if you have an ARM device, try out Manjaro ARM. I promise that you won't regret it. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you in the next one.